So if you have been watching me for a while, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's Eric. I love to travel, and in this video, I'll be showing you why West Sweden is one of my top travel destinations for 2018. The first activity on my list is island hopping. Now the coast of West Sweden is dotted with more than 8,000 islands, and each one has its own unique charm. Summertime in this part of the world is actual perfection, with long, warm days and cool short nights. We have the sun out actually, some nice lens flare action going on. I think it's 9.30 p.m., but it looks like it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon now. Starting in the south, you have the island of Vranjo, which is a close 20 minute ferry ride from Gothenburg. The island has about 350 year-round residents. It's primarily a fishing island, and if you come to this island, ask for Håkan. So my name is Håkan Karlsten, and uh, we are in my garden at Bromio today. This man basically runs the island. He is one of the nicest people I have ever met in any of my travels. He owns a local hotel on the island. Go show him some love, go show him some business. If you're looking for that escape from Gothenburg that isn't too far away, this is your island. Further up the coast north, right on the border of Norway and Sweden, are the Koster Islands. The car-free Koster Islands are Sweden's most westerly inhabited islands, and they are 100% the place to go for nature, as it's Sweden's only marine national park. Since there are no cars allowed, the islands are best explored by bike. There's not many places on earth where you can get this kind of peace and quiet and the beauty points. What do you think, Mike? We as Americans feel like this is the type of place that you would go to retire. It's quiet, it's with nature, there's water, but this is actually a place that people come, they choose to live here and start families here, and this is their life. They don't retire to move to a place like this. This is it, this is where they live. We come from New York, so this is the complete 180 of the lifestyle that we live. I'd say a good half the year when I'm not traveling. In life, it's so important to see the other side of the coin, to see the world and live in the world how other people, totally different from your lifestyle, choose to live. I highly recommend stopping at Coster Garden for a delicious locally grown vegan lunch. When you're there, ask for Stefan, the owner, and tell him Eric sent you. Finally, make sure to stop in the town of Smurgen, which is the liveliest summer town in West Sweden. If you look behind me, this almost looks like a postcard. I'm in the coastal town of Schmergen in West Sweden, and it's known for these tiny little boathouses all along the canal. My biggest tip for Schmergen, like all my travel destinations, if you want to get here and experience it like this, with no crowds, no people, no noise, you have to come on an off day. Come on like a Monday or a Tuesday, right at sunset, and here in West Sweden, the sun sets at... Let's see, it is just about 9.20. As you can see, look behind me. There is not a single person here, besides those seagulls. The next thing to experience is fishing culture. West Sweden runs deep with a seafaring and fishing culture throughout all generations. While in Gothenburg, make sure to stop at the restaurant Gabriel in the Fish Church, which is a massive hall that only sells fish and seafood. Ask for Johan the stud with the long beard. He's the guy who owns restaurant Gabriel. The west coast of Sweden's shellfish is amongst the best in the entire world. Not making that up, the entire world. That's thanks to cold, clean, mineral rich water. There's a bunch of companies that offer crayfish safaris. Uh, currently on a boat heading 30 minutes out to sea to learn how to crayfish like a local Swede. And uh, we're joined here by the captain, Mr. Martin. Hello. So we're currently pulling crayfish. We've got about 70 pots and normally they do 700. So the load is pretty light today. But this is one of the best things about traveling. You get to experience different ways of living. And you know, Martin is the pro at this. I'm slowing down the operation here. So you see this, this guy's too small. About, you said what, a year, two years? Two or three years. You oh. throw him back. We just found this random island that we docked the boat. All right, so afterwards, you boil for two or three minutes and you let them cool off. Dump them out here. And now we are enjoying actual fresh crayfish that you just saw us catch moments ago. And if you really, really want to fully immerse yourself in Swedish island fishing life, rent a boathouse with a few of your friends in the town of Grebstad. All right, so it is 
just about 6.30 in the morning. Listen to how quiet it is here. This is where we stayed last night. We are staying in an actual boathouse. This is one of the most unique places I have ever stayed just because they kept it with the natural rustic feel of an actual boathouse. I mean, I haven't seen a single person other than Jared and Mike since we arrived here. That's the isolation that you'll find here in West Sweden. Up next on my recommendations is ocean kayaking. The weather and the water are actually so perfect that it feels like you could be somewhere in the tropics. And it's hands down one of the most beautiful stretches of water in the world. Go and rent kayaks with some friends and head out for a day long excursion through the coastal waterways. Throughout this trip, you know, Sweden has been very relaxing, very just peaceful and tranquil. And I feel like this is the first bit of treachery we've come across. Not quite treachery, but I guess danger, a little excitement. We're kayaking around and we just come across a cliff right there. Are you sure? This is our guide, Marcus. <laughs> is it good to jump? Of course it's good to jump. <laughs> As he smiles. <laughs> we've come so far to Sweden. Do you want to jump off the cliff? Are you nuts? Of course. He did say jump at your own risk, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah. A dashing 70 meter swim across the channel, scaling up the 20 meter high rock face. Oh shit. I wasn't recording. Really? Just kidding. Mike and I made our way to the edge of this cliff, which was much higher from up there than down by the water, I'll say that. We counted and on three, we sent it off the cliff. Uh, Mike landed kind of kind of bad if you if you look at this still frame Mike landed on his side So if you are jumping off something this high Do a pencil dive unless you are trained at doing flips off of high cliffs and now a traditional Swedish lunch with some good old smoked mackerel some bread eggs and of course coffee and cake My next recommendation is to go to West Sweden during Midsummer Celebration. Midsummer is the celebration of the longest day of the year. There's tons of dancing around a maypole, good friends, schnapps, and of course, saunas. Now, I've made a whole video on the topic of Midsummer, which I'll link down below in the description. So make sure to go check that out for a full in-depth look on this Swedish holiday. And finally, I recommend enjoying the city of Gothenburg. Again, I've made a full in-depth video on my top things to do in Gothenburg, so make sure to go check that out as well in the description. And with that, I will see you in the next travel series, which will be in New York City. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.